If you're building any kind of application these days, there is a high probability that you will need cloud computing services. As you may see, my flavor is Microsoft Azure. I'm just now logged into the portal. And uh, if, you, if this is the first time that you see how the portal looks like, you know, you have the buttons and you can create resources relatively easily. You can just click the button, create your virtual machines or Azure functions or whatever it's, whatever it's actually needed for you. Now, the big challenge of a simple creation of resources is also a big problem because there is a chance that you might make a mistake. And uh, in a case that, for instance, you have three stages, which is quite usual for the software development, where you would have a development environment, some sort of test or QA environment, and then production, you need to make sure that the resources you create are exactly the same on different stages of course their size meaning like uh, the scaling shouldn't necessarily be exactly the same but you know if you have a service bus configured in a certain way this needs to be configured in the same way in all the environments so that's the, the crucial uh, thing to make your software uh, working as expected now how do we do this how to make sure that the the, the infrastructure is exactly the same in all stages now we can do the automation of the infrastructure and its versioning. So this is exactly the same as you would build any other code. Uh, you can also script the whole infrastructure and uh, you, know, you can commit the code inside the Git repository or whatever you wanna do it. And using this script, you can make the environments consistent without any manual intervention needed. One thing that is crucial to say here is that uh, if you're using Google Cloud or uh, if you're using Amazon or something else, the syntax that I'm showing you here is going to be different probably, but the process is going to be very much the same. So I'm just walking you through the process more than I'm going to focus on the syntax itself and, uh, and the tools essentially needed. Now, um, again, the idea is that we have automated process to create all the resources needed for us. Usually what I do personally is I go through the through the Azure portal. I create all the resources that I need manually. So I do this manually. And then from this configuration, I can generate ARM scripts. So here you have this possibility to click the export template, which is going to give you an ARM script, which are, by the way, completely and really ugly. And then from those ARM script, you can build a bicep. And this is not a joke. Microsoft is some sort of for some reason focused really on i guess they have some fitness guru or something because uh, arm is azure resource manager i believe maybe i'm i'm uh, i'm mistaken and then you have a bicep which is declarative syntax to you know build uh, essentially to deploy azure resources one cool thing is from the bicep 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 i don't know you can build an arm script so this is how i am actually doing it okay so um, let's say that I have the scenario where I want to build an Azure function, where I want to build a service bus and I want to build a key vault. So key vault is already here. I'm going to explain you afterwards why it is it here. Um, but let's say that I already have a picture of what needs to be done. And by the way, I already did this. So I'm not going to code manually, uh, on, on the video, in the video, you will be able just to see the code and uh, get the basic understanding how this works. Now. Uh, first thing first, you would need to install some of the tools. So first you would need to install Azure command line interface. This is needed so that you can actually test is everything working as expected or not. Um, then you will need to prepare yourself to some other links. Um, you will execute some of the lines when you install this Azure command line. And uh, yeah, that's, that's essentially it here. Uh, and you can also read a bit more about the bicep, what it is what are the benefits, things like that. And you can see here, how does it actually uh, look? So the second thing that you need is a Visual Studio Code. So hopefully you have the Visual Studio Code. I'm already showing you the, the example of the bicep, which I wrote, um, which we're going to explore a bit. And But to go to the installation back, you need a Visual Studio Code. And then when you install the Visual Studio Code, you can go to the marketplace and you can search for the bicep. When you go to this little fellow, you can install it. So the version today that I'm using is 0.9.1. So it's not even one still, but um, 
it is as you may see relatively often downloaded just 22 reviews but anyways i'm using it now uh, there are a couple of school of schools of thoughts how to build the infrastructure you have a people saying that infrastructure needs to be a part of let's say a microservice or it needs to be dealt in in a different ways how i'm doing it and how i learned that this is actually the easiest way to do it is to have a specific repository for the infrastructure scripts and i'm deploying it when i need it so that's that's essentially it my uh, logic here is is relatively simple because I don't see a point of deploying infrastructure every time if I deploy microservice because maybe infrastructure didn't change at all. So I, it's just for me, it's just an overhead and essentially I'm just waiting uh, until everything is done, but I actually don't get any value. So it doesn't make much sense. Anyways, let's, let's explore this a bit. So I say, I need to have a certain Azure function and I need to have a service bus. So the service bus, I will not go into details of those, those little fellows, but I can guarantee you that this is relatively common scenario where you would need a function. Now, Azure is very nice, but the problem with it is it's also a bit complicated. So they have a lot of resources. For instance, if you want to build an Azure function, if you go to the portal, it's relatively easy. You just put some name, click the button, and you know, more or less, you're, you're done. Um, so what you have to do here, you need to basically understand a bit more what is happening behind the scenes. And when you do the export of the template, uh, which is showing you ARM scripts, you can learn a lot about the resources which Azure is using. For instance, if you want to have Azure uh, function. So the folders are, are maybe a bit here, a bit misleading. Um, you will be able to build a function, but you will need, to, it will need to live in a certain plan. So the plan needs to be built first so that you can host a function in it. So that's, you know, basic logic out of it. Okay. So let's start with the, the, the components, the, the simpler components first. I would need to have an application insight, right? So I went really with a minimalistic approach saying, uh, giving some sort of name. So I have two parameters here, the name of the application insights and location where it is going to be hosted. And this is how it looks like. So I have the certain version of the template, which I'm using. I'm naming the resources AI here, application insights, not artificial intelligence. And I'm specifying minimum amount of properties needed. So this is going to be my module. Every time when I want to uh, deploy Azure uh, application insights, I can just call this template. Then I have consumption function. Okay, maybe I could, um, it's actually just, just a simple and normal function. What I'm doing here is I'm specifying a bit more properties uh, for in this case, plus I'm defining one output value, which is principal ID of this function. And I'm saying, I'm actually trying to get an existing resource, in this case, application insights, which I'm going to create uh, before of it. So I'm going to use this application insights to specify it inside the application settings as the instrumentation key for the, for the uh, Azure function. Uh, so this is going to be kind of reference and, and connection between application insights and, and my function itself. Now, what I did, I just specified the name, specifying location, telling what kind of kind it is. Uh, I'm saying that identity is a system assigned. So essentially, I'm going to get certain GUID, which is going to register this application. And for the properties, you know, I'm specifying the, the server farm and, uh, you know, running from package one, I don't even know why did I do this and saying HTTPS only is true. So that's essentially it. Then I have a plan. So the plan should be uh, with the, you know, name, same as, as I had it for all the others, location, and then uh, tier. So this should be a consumption plan so that uh, I don't pay uh, for, for, you know, lying down time of the machines. And then I have a key vault. Key vault is a bit more complicated. 
because in the key vault you're not specifying just the key vault you're also specifying secrets so you can even define the secrets exactly in a template now um, this is uh, a bit more complicated because now here you may notice I, I have a, a, a parameter which is a password uh, which also has this secure tag here and uh, you know there, there is also some some uh, sizing of the key vault there are access policies that i'm doing and i'm just going to run you quickly through it so um, the tenant id I'm, I'm getting from the subscription so there is a function and i can call the property which is a type of string so this is how it actually works um, setting some sizing here hard-coded ideally you would pass this as well as a parameter and then for the access policies, I'm actually getting here, as you may notice, array of secret principles. And now this is underlined because it thinks I'm actually storing some secrets here, uh, but I'm not. And then uh, in this array, I'm going to read every single one of the values and I'm going to um, give it permission to read the secrets from that key vault. And then I'm doing what I'm doing is I'm saving those two values as a secret. So I just put the username and password as an example username is is not necessarily a secret but the password is and i i'm just really hard coding it I'm, i will explain in some of the videos afterwards how how this should be managed in the right way then i have a service bus uh, relatively simple as well so we have uh, four properties we're defining a service bus and then we're defi defining queue so the queue is going to live on a, on a service bus and also here same as on a key vault what i do have i have a parent so the in this case secrets are going to live inside this key vault same as this uh, queue is going to live in this service bus so those kind of templates i do have and you will probably be able to extend them uh, significantly um, using you know other resources and maybe exploring this or decompiling arm to the bicep which is also possible but it's not 100 uh, percent you know always working so you know just consider this as, as really really basic templates so what i'm doing afterwards i'm building a main script now main script is invoking creation of the resources using those templates so those modules are nothing but it's just a simple bicep script they're exactly the same we were just looking at those things so i'm telling via this uh, main uh, script i'm telling okay please build me a service bus I'm going to pass you those parameters as uh, I'm going to pass the value of it and you will build me a service bus from this template so it will also build this queue um, please build me application insights please build me a, a function app and a uh, function app plan sorry and then please build me a function app and this function app creation is going to depend on the creation of the application insights and it will create uh, depend on the function app plan creation so i won't be able to create uh, a function app before the function app plan and application insights are done and then i have a uh, need to also uh, create a key vault and then the key vault is going to depend on the function app because i'm also passing the principles of this function app uh, to the key vault so that i can get this read uh, property uh, read uh, access of the secrets so this is how it actually looks like now what i also do have i created myself a dev parameters now this is a json and it's really arm like so i really don't like this much because the the setup is exactly the same what is what is critical here the critical thing is that you need to have the same parameters here and in your parameters file so you have here uh, AI name, this guy has to be present here. Same for all the other properties. In this case, I don't. the only property that I don't need is um, uh, obviously uh, location, because the location is, is uh, it's, it's variable here, and it is uh, used, you know, I'm using the function to actually retrieve uh, the location, I can pass it uh, wherever I want. Um, you can also play around a bit with this. You can, um, you know, uh, change the values. You can have some prefixes. You can, you know, you can do your, your magic essentially here, same as you would build any kind of string. Um, but I'm really not going to go too much into it at the moment. So now when you 
successfully built your uh, infrastructure file, when you uh, built your parameters file, so I built this one for the dev instance, let's say, um, you're able to, uh, you know, run your um, command line to build, uh, to build the basic uh, infrastructure on your Azure portal. Now, if you go here, I don't have anything. So what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to um, clear this thing and uh, I'm going to run the command line which I run before. So AZ deployment group create, I'm going to tell exactly what I want. I'm saying that I want to run this bicep file and I'm saying that I want to pass the parameters which I also built before. So I'm going to hit enter and now the problem is this is going to run for some time and uh, the only thing that we can do right now is to wait a bit um, and uh, yeah I think it's a smart idea to pause the, the video while all this is running. Um, the only important thing that I can tell you uh, just before I, I pause the video is that what you can also do now you can th this this run is going to show you some warnings so you can use this uh, command as well to maybe uh, when you run it you will you will see warnings if any or uh, you might get some errors which you would need to fix uh, to proceed forward but uh, yeah I'm hoping that this is not going to be uh, quite often the case let me just click okay you see the resources are actually popping up but it will need some time so let me just pause the video I'm going to continue afterwards great seems that Azure was uh, quick enough uh, far quicker than I expected so uh, as we may see in the background, and let me just click on the portal, all the resources that I specified were created and I will just assume and you know you can trust me a bit that everything is inside is configured and built exactly as I, as I specified in the bicep script. Uh, the only thing that I uh, left uh, to explain is why the key vault was here before. So the problem with the key vault is when you delete a key vault by the default there is a there is a deletion protection so it will be virtually deleted by default but the name is still going to be reserved so if I want to run the script again um, uh, with the same name I would get an error that there is already a key vault deleted with this name so that I need to either recover it or whatever and this I was just way too lazy to do this also be careful when naming some resources so Azure is quite often giving a limitation uh, for, uh, for names. So usually you cannot have some special characters or the file name, a sort of resource name can be cannot be larger than certain amount of characters. And, um, and this can actually cause some, some very interesting problem. Just, just to give you a spoiler alert, not spoiler alert, just to give you an uh, example. At one point we were able to deploy a re uh, Azure function with a name which is actually a bit larger than a, than the limit. I, I don't know how was this even possible. And then the function was just starting and stopping constantly. And it was very, very difficult to figure out what was the problem of it. And then when we just changed the name out of it, it started working as expected. So, and by the way, this was of course on a production. So be careful when naming things and uh, you know follow some recommendation it's, it's a very good idea to even go to portal and, and start typing the name if it works on the portal it will probably work as well in a script so that's it thank you very much and uh, yeah looking forward uh, to you know see you guys using this